Hello everyone and welcome to ZP Productions and today I'll be reviewing the 50 to 400 millimeters f 4.5 to 6.3 for the purpose of portraiture. Now, using such a super zoom telephoto lens for portraiture is not normal, but there is some perks to it. And in today's video, I'll talk about this lens, how I feel about it, and is it worth it to mess around with it? So I'm Richard, welcome to ZP Productions. This is a review of the lens, 50 to 400 millimeters, f 4.5 to 6.3. Not a terribly fast lens, but if you are in daylight, more than usable. Before I start, I thank Class Distribution for loaning me this copy of the lens to try out. I think uh, using this let me learn a little bit on super telephotos and are they worth it? No, for using in portrait scenarios. And it's a mixed feeling I will share with you in this video itself. So for this lens itself, I did a photo shoot with my friend Naomi. Uh, she was doing this character called Toa. So I had fun, we did a shoot, it's a collaboration. Uh, and we had quite some photos. Now in this shoot itself, I used a Sony A1, you can see on the table here, with the 50 to 400 millimeters. And in the later part of the shoot, I shot with the 50 millimeters GM lens. And that is for me to know what's the sharpness difference because we always say sharp, but you know, without comparison, is it really sharp? And you must compare in the same scenario. We all know this is ultra sharp. How does this stand up? In today's video, you will look at it. So first, let me talk about handling in the field. I think that the Super Teddy isn't that heavy. With the A1, no problem. I can easily handhold it for the entire shoot itself. The only problem is shutter speed. And I'll talk about it in the next session called image stabilization. And for image stabilization, I will say this lens is a mixed bag. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. I have shot shots that were like 200 plus millimeters and about 1 over 160, 1 over 200 shutter speed, as you can see some of the shots here, and they weren't tech sharp, or I should I say, you can tell it's motion blur. So the image stabilization works at times, doesn't work at times. There are shots that are shot at 1 over 60, or should I say 1 over 160 for 300 plus millimeters and it works out well. But for some reason, some shots didn't work out too well, even though it was nearly one is to one shutter speed. And this brings up to the biggest weakness of this lens, and that is its relatively low and slow aperture. Now the aperture is 4.5 to 6.3, and for consistency sake, most likely you'll lock off to 5.6 and then go 6.3 occasionally. Uh, I mean, you can go for 4.5. I'm not stopping you or nobody's stopping you but you probably want to keep it consistent for easy adjustment if not your lighting your camera will just fluctuate non-stop so a lot of times i did notice that um the shutter speed the moment there is cloud cover it becomes insufficient and then you have to raise your iso and what is the impact of raising iso is additional noise in fact let me show you iso 800 shot during daytime uh, this was at the start because i was doing some video stuff and did my photos after that so uh, I shot at 800, it was really sharp, but you can zoom in and see noise. Now, a modern camera like the Sony A1 doesn't mean that it has no noise at ISO 800. It does have, and if you are a pixel people, you will be affected by it. If you're not a pixel people, I can tell you, you zoom out, looks perfectly fine. And if you can shoot with ISO 400, ISO 800, this lens is perfectly good. But in cloud cover, you may drop to as low as 1 over 160 or 1 over 100 to shoot with this lens. And as I said, the image stabilization isn't terribly good. So that is some trade-off to note. Now, when it comes to image quality, very nice, very nice. Let me tell you guys, very nice. The sharpness, well, every time it's in focus, it is sharp. And when I mean sharp, I mean... In comparison to the GM lens at f1.2, f2, not too bad. You don't feel like you lose anything. In fact, let me put it side by side to show you one shot that's out. Less than 100 millimeters on this lens with the Sony GM. You can see yourself. It's sharp, really well and usable. And it is sharp throughout the entire range, even at 400 millimeters or 300 plus millimeters when I use it. Sharp and good, really sharp and good. The bokeh itself, now this is f6.3, really don't have much bokeh. Even at 300 meters, 400 millimeters, you can still see the bridge quite significantly. You can see the structure is, I mean, you can tell that it's separated, not like it's totally not separated at all. Uh, but if you are into bokeh, 
only at the very very longest focal length that is good enough separation for me at least and when you are at shorter focal length like 50 millimeters you have to separate it through light through edit uh, the slight bokeh yes in full screen mode you can see it but if you look at the mobile phone it looks relatively flat and this is where the issue lies because a lot of time today we are looking photos on our mobile phone which is a small little screen and this small little screen makes bokeh less significant literally i would say that so the subject and the bokeh background looks about the same so it's a weakness if you are shooting at let's say 100 millimeters 15 millimeters but if you are shooting at 400 millimeters i think it's perfectly fine but that's it let's not detract from image quality it is good very little chromatic aberration in any ways very good sharpness vertical lines seems not bad quite straight to me uh, i would say that if you give me this lens and any of the sony cameras more than one of us uh, I would say as uh, I have no problem using it for shooting portraiture as long as it's a bright daylight. Now, what is the reason you want to use such a lens to shoot portraiture? Well, you can select where you want to, I would say as box your subject up. You can select what background goes into your frame and it is really fun. Let me show you 50mm plus all the way to nearly 400mm. The difference is great and this is the fun factor of such a lens i mean yes it's not meant for portraiture but if you ever have a chance to use a super tally for portraiture you will have a lot of fun and you get to really control what background goes into your frame i mean if you want less background just move back and zoom in it is really easy and if you want more background you want slightly wider look like 15 millimeter type just zoom out go closer so you have options and i think options is what you are really paying for if you ever buy this lens for portraiture overall if you are intending to use this lens for portraiture i'll say as it is definitely usable it is definitely sharp enough overall you know the image quality is very acceptable to me and this is coming from somebody who has used tons and tons of primes and high-end l lens or gfx lenses very acceptable in fact I rarely say, or should I say, I don't really say all lenses are acceptable. Some lenses are really crap and I can easily name you some. Like, so really I think this lens is really good. Should you buy this for portraiture? That's the very last question you should ask. And my answer is, if you live in a place, potentially sunshine, sure, you can buy this for portraiture. If you live in a place, potentially cloudy, don't buy this. If you live at a place with a nice beach, nobody in the background, bright, good light, get it. If you live in a place where things are messy, a lot of buildings, structures, trees, whatever, a lot of background mess, and you have poor light, don't get it. But if you have really, really good light in such a scenario, this is quite good. You get to select what goes in your frame. So there's a lot of trade-off. I would say this lens is definitely not for everybody when it comes to portraiture. In fact, the fact that you're looking at this means that you have some interest, but you're not sure too. <laughs> Even I'm not sure. This is a very good traveling super tally lens. I mean, not many lenses give you 50 to 400 and all the way sharp. And for the purpose of traveling, maybe this is all you need. Uh, shoot near, shoot far. Quite a fun lens. In fact, if you are intend to travel and shoot portraiture, maybe this lens is not a bad choice. Now, the final part, is the pricing i know the price is not very high let me show you the photo here not too high but still for the same price you could buy many of the primes you could also consider the 35 to 150 and top up more for it i mean that is a better lens more costly lens for portrait but better lens you know you can also buy like the 2875 which covers the earlier ranges there are options to do portrait not only this lens so that is something to consider you are paying a lot of money for the super zoom capability for 400 millimeters it's up to you whether you want to get it or not and that's really about it interesting lens usable for portrait not recommended for everybody but if you can utilize it there may be quite some good perks to it and it is really good 
image quality. Some of the best I've seen for a zoom lens. And that's about for today. I hope you enjoy this short little portrait shooting review of the 50 to 400 millimeters f 4.5 to 6.3 and i hope to see you again if you have any questions do put down in the comments below if not do like and subscribe because that will allow me to get a lot more equipment for review see you then bye bye